Hi guys, hope everyone's having, well like aside from the very obvious, hope everyone's having um, a brilliant bank holiday weekend so far. So clearly it got off to the worst possible start. Uh, I would travel down to Villa Park on Friday night with the Walnut Blues. Everything about the night bar obviously the most important thing which is uh, the match and the result. Uh, we had a boss night as always, top blues and um, the away support was fantastic and we don't need to stress how poor it was from Everton on Friday night. Everyone's well aware of it. The fans deserve better that travelled down. Evertonians as a whole, we deserve better. Um, but, you know, I think there's a, a number of factors as to why things didn't go down the way we wanted at Villa Park. And starting with the starting 11, for me anyway, on the coach actually on the way down and earlier on in the day, I was saying that I think it was really important. Um, although I did think that Silver would start with Dominic Calvert-Lewin, I thought if we wanted to go and get the win, which is obviously what we needed to do and what we wanted to do, um, then we should have started with at least one of either Iwobi, but for me it would have just been sticking Moise Keane, starting him up top. We know he's not up to full match fitness at the moment. We know he's probably got not got 90 minutes in the can right now, but you know why not go there and scare Aston Villa from the start? We know Villa Park is one of the most intimidating stadiums to go. It's, you know, 41,000 packed full of passionate diehard die supporters. Um, they make an awful lot of noise and credit to Villa for that. They've always had excellent support home and away. Um, so that's why it was important to set out to scare them, give them something to put them on the back foot, try and quieten down those home fans. And, you know, for me, that would come with a Moise Keane being there because he's so unpredictable. Everyone, you know, everyone's fearful of him because you, you've seen in glimpses already. We've seen what he's done for Juventus and obviously he's only played three games for Italy, two goals for them. But in the glimpses of the brief spells that we've seen him play for Everton, he looked a real threat, you know, from the second that he, he comes on the pitch. So for me, we had to start with him. We saw that we started with Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Um, obviously, Morgan Schneidlin was back in as well. Um... <sighs> To be honest, we started the game quite brightly. Like Silver said it himself after the game, um, and it, that was something that I did agree with him on. In, in what he said was that, you know, we we did start the game quite brightly without creating any clear cut chances. We were creating opportunities. We looked the more lively, and we looked like the most likely to. I I thought we'd go on to win the game. To be honest with you, but there was still even then that missing thing of you know, somebody that's going to put the ball in the back of the net. And we saw throughout the game, you know, Villa, when they took the lead, it was the first chance they'd had. But they had someone like Wesley, big centre forward, who you can count on to put the ball in the back of the net. I don't want to be someone who slates on Dominic Calvert-Lewin because, you know, it, it, no doubt the lad's going to be feeling miserable enough as it is right now. But... He's got to score that chance and he knows that, we all know that, he's got to put that away. And for me, that's why Keane has to start because I do, I love Dominic Calvert-Lewin, but at the moment and from what we've seen so far, you don't see him on the pitch and think he's going to score for us. And, you know, again, later in the game, Walcott missing such an easy, well, who am I to say it's easy, but for me, he's got to, he's got to bury that and it seems to do seems to do what happens every time almost every time nine out of ten and just balloons it over the over the crossbar and again we're left frustrated the whole game was frustrating um there was no urgency about us no desire gomez was having an off game and i think when he does that kind of sets the tone for a lot of others it shouldn't but it does and you know it was clear from early on that gomez it wasn't going to be his day and you could see that his head had dropped but i think that stands him probably still carrying a little bit of a knock um, by no means has he just become a terrible footballer overnight. You know, this is the thing that this is why we need to have some perspective still. Look, it's so frustrating, and I was fuming. And during the game, you could have heard me effing and blinding and screaming. And it was a really tough game to be at and watch. But, you know, uh, Schneidlin as well, frustrating. There seemed to just be a lot of side to side crab passing going on backwards, lack of desire. The amount of times that Luca Dean was free in space down the left hand side. and you could see him crying out for the ball as the supporters because we were closest to him were, sc were screaming out that that was the ball that was on but there was just 
it just didn't click for Everton um, on the day. I can't really pick out anybody other than, to be honest with you, the two substitutes who came on in... Um, this is this is the two subs I'm referring to. I've got to exclude Walcott from this, unfortunately. But uh, Iwobi and Moisa Keane, when they came on, looked lively. Surprise, surprise. And we were screaming out. You knew it was going to be left late, but you were screaming out for them to come on. I thought, to be honest with you, 10 minutes left of the half, a, a point should have been made and a couple should have been taken off, or at least one. I know that's a bit drastic, but it, you could just tell that something needed to happen. If not, at the very least, we were expecting changes to have been made for the second half. That wasn't the case. Left, as I say, to about half an hour to go, and I think it was too little too late. Iwobi looks lively, excellent, always looking to make stuff happen. Was unfortunate not to get himself a goal on his debut. Um, but as I say, there were opportunities there. As it happens in the end, when there's five minutes injury time, which I thought there should have been a lot more, I'm not blaming the referee in any way, shape or form um, for this result or anything like that, because Everton were woeful, absolutely woeful. But it was frustrating sometimes. I don't think there was any free flow to the game. I'd love to see how long the game, the ball was actually in play for because it didn't feel very long. It seemed to be, you know, foul after foul after foul after foul. And it was, and we got frustrated with it. You could see the players were frustrated. The fans were frustrated. Everything played into Villa's hands and they punished us again with a goal deep into injury time um, as we were looking for that equaliser that didn't come. Um, and yeah, it was a really, really frustrating one. We went there with high hopes, you know, we probably, we all would have liked to have seen us beat Palace, but then we, you know, two clean sheets and we beat Watford at home on four points. You're thinking a win would be seven out of nine, which isn't too bad. That's a pretty solid start, um, but it, it just wasn't to be. And again, it feels like opportunity wasted, three points dropped. And I can totally understand. I've calmed down a bit. This is why I've left it a couple of days because it, 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 I'm passionate and you you know we all are as Evertonians and it is so frustrating but look I think all's not lost let's not forget we've barely seen our new signings and it's I don't know what's going on right now with Gabarmin I know he's got an injury and I hope I hope it's not as bad as some of the rumours because I don't know what's going on there but that can't be helped you know Fabian Delph again injured can't be helped so he's a new signing we haven't seen we've barely seen any of Gabarmin we haven't seen any of Sadivi yet Gomez is carrying a knock. Um, we've barely seen Alex Awobi. We've not seen too much of Moise Keane. So, you know, it was always going to be the case. We, we had a we had a really slow, sluggish preseason. But didn't score many goals. Um, but as I say, the attacking players that we've brought in haven't really played too much yet. So, Richarlison hasn't been the best. We all know that as well. But again, he's played in the Copper America. He's obviously going to be tired, and you can see he's frustrated, and he's not performing his best. Again, we all know that. But it'll come. Sigurdsson, I'm finding very frustrating at the moment. Um, you just got to hope that a lot of it is to do with we're not quite there. And again, some of the business, some of the players coming in quite late in the window. It always takes time for these things to gel. And I've just seen the very last um, of the Newcastle-Tottenham game. Um, well, I watched the game. I'm sorry, I should say. It's just finished. And uh, Newcastle obviously won. 1-0. So... And, and Manchester United as well, getting beat at home yesterday to Crystal Palace. So that kind of has put things into perspective a little bit more for me about our result on Friday night. Yes, it's very frustrating. And in some ways, when these other teams drop points, it makes it more so because you think, ah, that would have been an opportunity to gain points on these teams. But at the same time, it's not just us. I think there's a few teams that are struggling to get into the momentum of things. And it might just be that it takes a bit longer. I do believe that when we see our new additions settled and fit and, and having a run in the team, things will pick up drastically. Hopefully, we can see Delph come back from injury um, and a few others. Hopefully, Gabarman's injury isn't as serious as you know what, what could be feared. So, yeah, let's just keep the faith. Let's We've got a huge game against Lincoln coming up, and it's absolutely paramount that we win that. And I think, you know, we need to go there. I think we will go there because it did let me down a bit last season um, and many other Blues as well. You know, how early we exited the League Cup and it seemed to be like we didn't field our strongest eleven, and it cost us in the end and we exited in what should have been a pretty plain sailing tie. So we have to get it right because it's not going to be easy. We're away from home as well. Their fans are going to be well up for it. You know, our fans are going to be a little bit... No doubt, though, every, every our away support is always top. So I've no doubt that, you know, come Wednesday when we're playing Lincoln, Evertonians are going to be showing their love for the team. Um, it's what we do. We have our frustrations and we have our moments where we're angry and frustrated. But, like, you know, we love our team and... 
the funds will play a big part. So <clears throat> get behind the boys and hopefully Marco Silva goes out there with fields a really strong start in 11. We've got to go there, go into win. We've got to win. And hopefully, you know, it'd be great to see Moyes Keane hopefully um, start and, you know, maybe pick up a goal or two. Would be great. Get some minutes under a Wobie's belt. Just get them a bit more up to speed, ready for what will be a huge, huge game against Wolves. Um, Wolves are a fantastic side. They're very dangerous um, and they're more than capable of punishing sides and they do it time after time. So we have to sort ourselves out. Hopefully, you know, against Lincoln, that will pick us up and, you know, if we can get a strong victory there, breathe a bit more confidence into the side, take that with us into Wolves and get Goodison really loud again and passionate and uh, hopefully we'll manage to get two wins. I think we all obviously start to feel a bit better then. So yeah, we're, we're really frustrated, we're really annoyed. The lads know it wasn't good enough. We all know it wasn't good enough. Everyone can see it wasn't good enough and um, things need to improve. And I, and I have confidence that they will improve. So yeah, um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh yeah, for those who didn't see my video yesterday when I was at Walton Hall Park, it was awesome. I had the best time and much needed pick me up, as I said, from Friday night. Um, so it's going to be the new home for Evan Ladies as of next season, right by Goodison Park. Beautiful location. Uh, there's there's still loads of work to be done on it, but got the first look of, of the place yesterday. As I say, the girls had a training session there, followed by a lovely barbecue. So it was really great to go and spend a little bit of time with the girls again, the staff, and just chat and you know get excited for the season in our new home. So yeah, there's going to be loads more coming up. Obviously, I'm going to be um, covering the ladies and going home and away with them next season. So as I keep saying. I really look forward to seeing loads of you down there because I know what Evertonians are like and I know we're going to back our girls, especially now we're playing in Walton. Um, so yeah, it's boss and I can't wait for the new season. The other thing I wanted to say is if you haven't already done your survey um, for the new stadium on the People's Project, then do make sure you do that. You've only got until midnight tonight to get that completed. So as I say, I know most of you or a lot of you will have, will have done it, but it's easy sometimes to get carried away with just looking at the designs and getting excited about all that stuff and you know sometimes don't get round to actually you know doing the kind of important bit which is completing the survey and giving our feedback so if you haven't already do make sure you do that even if you're not a blue if you're someone who lives in the city and want to have your say um <laughs> i don't know whether that's good or bad to say that no but you know, look it's it's a fantastic it's going to be a fantastic thing for the city so i do i would encourage anyone to um, make sure you get online and complete the survey. So yeah, I feel like there's other stuff I wanna talk about, but yeah, I'll obviously have some build up coming uh, to Lincoln in the week and stuff like that. And in terms of the channel itself, I know my content's been a bit sporadic and I kind of just really pick it up and, and chat when I've got something maybe worth saying or I wanna say something, but I've been in to see the lads at Toffee TV a little bit more. I'm going to be getting in there a lot more again. Um, I know a lot of you have asked about that. And it's one of my favourite places to be. I love going in and always have such a good time with the lads. So looking forward to getting back into Toffee TV. You'll see loads more stuff coming from me. Just get in there with the structure and the content. But as I say, um, we'll have loads more stuff covering the Blues, Everton ladies. Because we're all Everton and... Uh, as I say, we want to get a real support going for the girls. And uh, yeah, so I know we're a bit disheartened and frustrated and angry and pissed off about Friday. But perspective is key. Let's not lose our shit, even though I, listen, I wasn't like this <laughs> with when full time went at Villa Park on Friday. I was not happy, but perspective comes. We're passionate, we're emotional, but I think it's all going to be good. It's not going to happen overnight. We know that. We knew that already, but let's not lose sight of the bigger picture. It is a very exciting time, a very positive time. So yeah, turn those frowns upside down. <laughs> anyway, nice one, guys. I'll speak to you soon. Up the toffees.